Uh, a warm welcome to the LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. Uh, we are delighted to have you here with us today. And before we start, uh, please confirm that you can hear us uh, loud and clear by typing yes or sharing an emoticon in the chat box. So if you are able to hear me clearly, uh, please type in uh, yes or an emoticon in the chat box. Um, good. So I can see you can hear me well. Now, uh, our topic for today is uh, palm oil market price outlook in the short and medium term, which I believe this is something new and interesting to you. Now, this LLF webinar series is proudly brought to you by Brusa Malaysia in collaboration with our company, Excellent. I am CY Saw. I will be the moderator for today's session. We are privileged to have uh, Dr. Satya with us today and he will be sharing a valuable insights on this informative topic about the palm oil market price outlook. I understand that many of you may be curious about what is the fundamental outlook for a palm oil market and whether there are trading opportunities available to you. Therefore, uh, our topic today will revolve around uh, this aspect where Dr. Satya will elaborate on this topic in uh, greater details. I hope you find this uh, session enriching and informative, and we welcome any questions you may have regarding today's topic. Uh, I noticed some of you uh, here just entered this webinar. Uh, before we begin, uh, a final quick uh, audio check, and please type in OK or uh, Yes once more time in the chat box, or give us a thumbs up to confirm that you can hear me clearly. And if needed, uh, please adjust your volume settings to ensure optimal uh, sound quality. Good. Now, to ensure you can enjoy the smoothest and highest quality video experience on your site, I highly suggest that you turn off your video camera uh, during the session, as this will ensure that everyone can enjoy uninterrupted video and audio and have an optimal learning experience. Our session for today will be divided into two parts. The first hour uh, will be presented by Dr. Satya. Uh, following that, we will be opening up for a Q&A session where you can ask any question related to today's webinar. And to ensure that we can address your questions, uh, please type your question in the Q&A box and send them to all co-hosts, as uh, this will allow me to directly assess your questions easily. And please note that due to the volume of messages in the chat box, it may be challenging to spot your questions if you don't send your questions in the Q&A box. And along the way, if you have any questions, you can type your question in the Q&A box. As this LLF uh, Let's Learn Futures webinar series is brought to you by Busan Malaysia, we have exciting upcoming topics and uh, more to come. Uh, every Tuesday, we will be having this LLF uh, webinar that will be conducted in three languages, English, Malay, and Mandarin. So if you're currently uh, just only trading the stock market or just uh, started trading the Malaysia futures market, or even if you're interested in adding futures into your portfolio. Now, this LLF webinar is uh, definitely right for you, where our panel of speakers will be sharing with you insightful knowledge and practical strategies related to futures trading. And there are still more content-packed uh, informative topics lining up, and we will be adding uh, this to our list accordingly. So if you're interested in any topic and want to uh, improve your knowledge and skills on uh, futures trading, you can scan uh, this QR code, register yourself, and make sure to add into your calendar so you don't miss uh, the sessions. Besides the LLF uh, webinar series, we also have the LLF online workshop. Now this online workshop is different from the webinar. Uh, the online workshop is for those uh, who are serious in getting started in futures trading. In this workshop, uh, we will be covering a full set of beginner's knowledge in futures trading that are essential for you. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step guide to enable you to kickstart your first futures contract. So each session is uh, three hours. 
So if you are new to futures trading or would like to learn more about futures trading, quickly register yourself in this online workshop as it's entirely free and fully sponsored by Busa Malaysia. It's only limited to the first 50 online attendees. So grab your seat fast as this workshop is right for you if you want to kickstart your futures trading. The upcoming session is next week. So quickly register yourself in this. Now, before we begin, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Satya, the Managing Editor of uh, Palm Oil Analytics, which is a company where he's doing a price reporting agency covering daily prices, news and data based in Singapore. And earlier on this year, Palm Oil Analytics achieved a significant milestone by being acquired by Fast Market. Uh, Dr. Satya has been in the commodity information business for over 20 years. Besides that, he also serves as an economic advisor to the Malaysia Palm Oil Board, which is the MPOB. And he's also a regular speaker at Palm Oil conferences. Uh, without further ado, I'm delighted to hand over the presentation to Dr. Satya. So, um... So thank you very much to all of you who have joined. Good evening, good afternoon, uh, good morning from wherever you are joining. Uh, first of all, thank you to Excel uh, for, for inviting me to speak at this event. Uh, I understand this is uh, uh, a learning event, a learning event. Uh, so I will make it in that, uh, take that perspective and uh, offer some insight on how and why uh, fundamentals are important in understanding the CPO price uh, dynamics. So as CY uh, mentioned, my name is Satya Varka from Palm Oil Analytics, uh, which is now called Fast Markets Palm Oil Analytics. And you can see my email address and the website of the company where you can get more information on what we do and uh, uh, get access to all the available resources there. So there's plenty of resources which you can take a look at. So Palm Oil Analytics is a publisher of Palm Oil Price News and Data. So we are not traders, we are not brokers, we are not producers, uh, but we are independent publishers of Palm Market Pricing, Market Commentary, and so on. Uh, we aim to become an essential provider of global palm oil market news and data and uh, be a portal where global audience can come and join and look at the uh, pricing. So let me start with uh, speaking a little bit about the uh, vegetable oils market. Uh, so, leading, what are the leading vegetable oils consumed globally? So, there are many types of vegetable oils, as you would know, uh, ranging from coconut oil, cotton seed, olive oil, palm oil, palm kernel oil, peanut, red seed, bean oil, and sunflower seed oil. So, these are the major oils uh, that is consumed globally. Palm oil is a major, is the largest consumed uh, edible oil in the world, followed by soya bean oil, reed seed oil, and sunflower oil. Uh, but what's interesting is that if you walk in into any supermarket and look at the ingredients at the back of the bottle, like this picture here, you will see most of these oils are blended. They are not just pure palm olein or pure sunflower oil, but most are blended. The blend could be uh, many different types. They could be palm olein and soya bean oil, sunflower oil and rapeseed oil, and uh, many others. There are, in fact, palm olein blended with olive oil too. So palm olein is the cheapest, and then olive oil is the most expensive one. So you can have all type of blend, blended oils. And this really depends, it's sold in the markets, depending on the taste preference, uh, depending on the price, depending on the clouding point, which is the appearance of the oil at certain temperatures. So when a 
a blender decides to blend this oil, what are the factors they look to in order to buy? Uh, do they buy based on the cheapest? Do they buy based on their preference? And we will look into that a bit uh, deeper in the next slide. So, but it's bear, uh, worth bearing in mind that not all the oils that are produced, not all the oils that are produced are produced for the purpose of consumption. Okay. In fact, 76% of global soya beans, beans that are produced goes into animal feed. So soya beans are crushed, and the crushed soya bean is called soya meal, which has high protein content and is used for feeding the animals. So globally, soya bean production is mainly used for protein to feed the animals instead of used for human consumption. So this is a bit opposite to palm oil, where about 80% of the production of crude palm oil goes into palm olein, which is used as edible oil. So likewise, in the rapeseed oil segment, about 50% is used for animal and about 50% goes into human consumption. And you can see the pictures of the, on the most left side of your screen, my screen, is the uh, soya beans, once it's crushed, it's pulverized into uh, powder, which is then made into pellets for consumption of animals in the form of uh, protein pellets. And the picture in the middle is the, the black, the gray looking, is a red seed, which is crushed and uh, then turns into meal, which is then again used for animal consumption. So which seed to crush? So how do blenders decide uh, which one should I buy to blend? Which one should I source in order to produce the best selling oil? So there are many different factors. So one of the main uh, factors is pricing, right? Pricing. But before pricing, I just want to highlight other factors. Uh, so it depends. We choose soya beans. Can I sell the soya bean meal? That's the one question you'll be asking. Because you don't want to take soya bean, crush the beans, get the oil. What do you do with the balance of the meal, right? So risk management. Can I manage my risk, especially with the sunflower oil, where 70% of the shipment comes from the Black Sea? So there is a huge problem with the shipment, insurance, security of the product. Can I manage the risk of the price and the cargo? Availability. So it's important to remember that soya beans, rapeseed oil, uh, canola, sunflower, all these soft oils are seasonal crops. But palm oil is not a seasonal crop. Palm oil is a perennial crop. That means we always, you always get uh, production. But when it comes to soft oils, uh, the availability changes from year to year, right? It, depending on the weather, depending on the fertilizer, depending on the area. And in the United States, it also depends on the farmers switching between beans and corn. If they're planting more corn, then less beans. If they're planting more beans, then less corn. So that's another factor that's taken into account in order to decide which product should lenders, traders buy. As I said, taste preference earlier, in some countries, uh, the taste of certain type of oils a feature prominently in their palate. <clears throat> Substitutes. So if I buy this oil, can I also easily switch to another oil when it comes to packaging and distributing to the supermarkets? Refining margin, right? So what's the difference between my crude and palm olive? So there's a price difference. So if the difference is very narrow, you're making very little money. So again, refiners, Blenders will make a decision based on the refining margin, shipment availability, and finally, pricing. So when we speak about pricing, there are two types of pricing. One is futures, and the other is cash. Cash means you go to a supermarket, you pay the money, you get the bread, you get the oil, you get your product. So that is simply spot 
transaction where you pay the money, get the goods by willing buyer, willing seller. However, in some commodity markets, there is a futures contract available. What is a futures contract? A futures contract is simply a legalized document which allows the buyer and seller to come to an agreement on a predetermined price, tonnage, and delivery point together with delivery period. So that's what a futures contract is. And in the palm oil market, there are two types of futures contract. One is FCPO and the other is FEPO, both available on Bursa, Malaysia. So I really want to talk in the next uh, few minutes on the uh, futures market pricing governing both FCPO and FEPO. <clears throat> FEPO was launched uh, just about last year, uh, which is uh, East Malaysia uh, Palm Oil contract, uh, which is uh, available and the trading time opens at 9 a.m. Malaysia Singapore time, whereas FCPO opens at 10.30 a.m. Malaysia Singapore time. <clears throat> so these prices are available on the Bursa Malaysia website on a delayed pricing by 15 minutes. But if you want live pricing, you can also get it from the list of information providers or vendors list that's available on Bursa Malaysia website. And on that website, uh, Bursa Malaysia has listed all the different vendors who can uh, stream the live prices of FCPO and FEPO. So let's get back to the futures market pricing. So when we speak about pricing, there are several components that make up a price. Okay. So when you hear a price of CPO is 3,700 ringgit per ton, what does it mean? It means this price is made up of several factors. Number one, it's based on fundamentals. When we say fundamentals, we mean it is dependent on supply and demand in the market. Secondly, it could also be based on technical. So you know there are people who draw charts, draw the resistance curve, the support line, and then they study the charts, and then they make a call. Hey, I think the price should be this much. I think the price should be this much. So this price is also made up of some technical analysis. And thirdly, prices are also based on sentiment. So you just feel like, I think the prices are rising. I think tomorrow it's going to hit 3,800 ringgit. So you have a feel. So prices are also fueled by market sentiment. And this is what you call, uh, people have bullish sentiment, people have bearish sentiment, people are neutral in their sentiment. And then speculation. So speculation is a big driver. So a lot of people are, <clears throat> some people are, are, are triggering, uh, buying, 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 because they want to just speculate in order to make short-term profits. And this is happening a lot in the Chinese exchanges, on the Dalian exchange, on the Shenzhen, on the Shenzhou exchange, where the volume is, is very, very high. There's a lot of speculators in the market trying to make a profit quickly. <clears throat> so a price is also made of a bit of speculation in the futures. A seasonal. So sometimes uh, prices are high because production is low. And sometimes prices are very low because based on seasonal production, supply is very, very high. And although palm production, CPU production is perennial, which means there is production every week, there are periods, months in which production is at its peak and production when it is at a lower uh, peak level. It's like, like in Malaysia, CPO production peaks at, in August, September, and October, whereas in Indonesia, peak production is in September, October, and November. And Based on that, the prices will move accordingly. And also based on substitute. So you cannot just look at 
palm pricing by looking at CPO fundamentals alone. We have to look at CPO in relation to other oils because there are other oils in the market that is also trying to capture a market share, We're trying to capture the market share. And these oils are, as I described earlier, could be bean oil, could be sunflower oil, could be rapeseed oil. These are the main oils that compete with uh, palm olive. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, so today I want to speak about the first point here, which is fundamentals. I really want to speak about fundamentals. So I'm not going to cover technical analysis, sentiment, how to read speculation, or what is seasonal or substitute. I really want to focus on uh, fundamentals only. So when we speak about fundamentals, what does it mean? It means that <clears throat> it means that we are interested in supply and demand variables. So there are many, many variables. There are a multitude of variables. And I'm just highlighting some key variables here. So number one, production, weather, workers, deals, related edible oils, stocks, fertilizer, and many others. So I highlighted some in green to show that these are the main ones. These are the main ones that will have an impact on the supply and demand this year. Okay, So I may not be covering all of this because of time constraint, but uh, you're very welcome to uh, drop me an email or, or, or drop me a message uh, to my WhatsApp, which I will show a bit later for further information or for further references. So these variables govern pricing in many different ways. Okay? So you cannot escape from fundamentals. Yes, CPO prices will move according to speculation sometimes. Uh, yes, CPO prices will move according to some technical analysis. But at the end of the day, all prices, pricing levels should converge to the fundamentals. And when we, when we say fundamentals, it must have a basis. Prices should move according to a basis, whether it's weather, whether it's stock levels, production, or consumption. So when do we get to know which data is coming out when? So fundamental means it's based on data. So on, on the Palm Oil Analytics uh, website, we have put all the dates on which critical price sensitive data are going to be released. So tomorrow is the 10th of May and on the 10th of every month, the Malaysian Palm Oil Board MPOB will release the data on Malaysia supply and demand at 12.30 p.m. Malaysia Singapore time. So when the data comes out, the global market will be watching, will be looking to get a sense of the fundamentals. Hey, where is production in April? Where is stocks at the end of April? No doubt a lot of these estimates are already out there in the market. Uh, Bloomberg publishes estimates, Reuters publishes estimates, and the estimates are already available. Yes, markets does price in these estimates well before the release of the NPOB data. But we are looking for some surprises. Is production higher than expected? Is production lower than what was shown in the polling data? Like for example, tomorrow, focus will be on where is production? According to Bloomberg and Reuters, production is nearly unchanged. But Malaysian Palm Oil Association, MPOA, thinks production is much, much lower than we think, that we estimate. MPOA thinks production should be as down as 8%, right? So that means there will be an impact on stock levels too, right? On stock levels too. So that's something to watch. So that's what we really mean by fundamentals. Looking at data, looking at the basis in order to make informed decision on where rising levels should be. So we're not randomly uh, making a 
prediction. You're not randomly making a call because at the end of the day, the idea is that prices should converge to fundamental. And this is not just through on CPO, but it's also through on the equities market, on the currency market, on the commodities market, and so on. If prices do not move according to fundamentals, then that's when we create a bubble. A bubble, which means prices are artificially inflated. And the danger then, as you know, if the bu bubble is burst, then many people will be caught with in the wrong position. So moving on a bit uh, further. <clears throat> So what are we expecting on the production side of palm oil? So palm oil is expected to show a small increase globally. And as you know, Indonesia is the largest palm oil producer in the world, accounting for nearly 50 million tons, followed by Malaysia, just under 20 million tons. So together, Malaysia and Indonesia account for about 84% of global CPO production. But I want to make the point that although Indonesia is a much more than double uh, a larger producer than Malaysia, the global market and you should look at Malaysian supply and demand data that comes up from NPOB. So not Indonesian data, but Malaysian data. So why? Because Malaysian data is timely, it's uh, transparent, and it is reliable. Indonesian data is somewhat reliable, but it's always late, and the market does not, so when the data is late, the market doesn't have time to price it in. The data is gone already. The main fundamental you should look at when it comes to Indonesia is Indonesia domestic policy, and Indonesia biodiesel policy. These are the two main areas for Indonesia, but fundamentally, monthly basis, Malaysian palm oil bought data governs the pricing movement of CPO globally. So when the data is released tomorrow, you can go to the website, NPOB website, and check the data. If you don't want to check on that website, you can also see, I will post it on my Twitter, you can also take a look at it and also available on Palmol Analytics uh, website. So this year we're expecting a small 3% uh, rise in palm oil led by Indonesia, no surprise there. But there will be a big reduction in olive oil uh, coming up from Tunisia and Spain, mainly because of the uh, drought weather that has impacted the crops over there. Rapeseed oil is also expected to see a big surge, mainly on favorable weather in Australia. <clears throat> so, as I say, uh, we cannot look at palm oil by itself. The closest substitute to palm olein, palm olein is the most used edible oil, is soya bean oil. Okay, so these two oils move in tandem. And here I give you a chart, the red line showing rapeseed oil that is listed on the Zhengzhou exchange in China. The blue line is the soya bean oil on the Dalian exchange. And the green line is the palm olive on also on Dalian exchange. And you can see these oils are closely correlated to each other. So we cannot ignore other oils. We have to look at the behavior of other oils in order to understand crude palm oil. So here again, I show the spread between crude palm oil on Bursa Malaysia, third month. Why do we choose the third month? Because third month is the most actively traded contract on the Bursa Malaysia compared to soya bean oil, second month, on CBOT. And you can see it's closely correlated, but somehow the correlation breaks down somewhere in June, July 2022. So there is no connection between these two. Why? One main reason is because in the United States, 
soya bean oil is increasingly used in biodiesel blending. Remember, soya bean oil is the biggest raw feedstock for biodiesel production in the United States. So that's one reason about 40% of soya bean oil supply in the U.S. goes into biodiesel. Whereas in the CPO market, 80% of crude palm oil, which is then blended into palm oil, which is then refined into palm oil, goes into edible oil consumption. So the market segment has shifted significantly since middle of last year. So what does it tell us? It tells us that the connection between these two may not be very relevant on the futures market. On the futures market, it may not be relevant. Although every morning before the FCPO opens, many people look at soya bean oil behavior on the CBOT overnight. So if soya bean oil closed higher, we expect CPO to open higher. If bean oil closed lower, we expect CPO to trade lower for the day. But in the long term, you can see from this chart, the correlation is not very steady after middle of last year. If this persists, if this continues, then CPO traders will then have to look at other clues. Could be Dalian, could be rapeseed oil, and so on. Okay, next, so this is futures. I just showed you the futures. So the next slide is looking at the cash price. So in the cash market, cash market or physical market or the real market where you have the goods on sector, if you look at the two most consumed edible oil, palm oil and soya bean oil, the correlation is very, very strong. The correlation is very, very strong. But what you observe here is that since March of this year, the price of palm oil has become slightly more expensive than bean oil. So this is a bit unusual because palm oil, palm oil is the most consumed and the cheapest oil among all the edible oils. But now we are faced with a situation where palm oil is not the cheapest anymore. Palm oil has become more expensive than bean oil. It's trading almost on par with sunflower oil. So it's a problem for Malaysian exporters because it's difficult to find markets that will source palm oil, especially markets of like India and Asia, Oceania, where palm oil is seen as slightly less quality, lower quality compared to other oils. So if this trend persists, where palm oil is more expensive than other oils, then Malaysian exports will suffer. Malaysian exports will suffer. Okay, let's look at the other chart. So here, I put all the line charts together. So apology, it's a bit busy. But what you can see is that the golden line is the CPO on Bursa Malaysia. is the cheapest among all the oils in the long time series here. And it is also the most used oil among all the oils. But that doesn't mean that palm CPO will remain as the most competitive oil. It can either move slightly higher than the other oils, or it can drag the other oils lower. So the main point in this chart is that we have to look at other related oils on other exchanges, which are all available uh, freely on the terminals. So when we look at CPO, which is the most sensitive oil? Which is the most sensitive variable? The most sensitive variable for CPO is Malaysia end month stocks. So here I have uh, used an estimate number for April, although the actual data will only be out tomorrow. And we think the stock levels will be lower from March uh, to about 1.25, 1.3 million uh, tons, so which is very low. So that means there is scope for prices to move even higher than where we are today. And you saw the prices 
recovering today, recouping the losses, moving higher still. So you can draw all these charts. I mean, MPOB has uh, kindly put all the data freely available on its website. So you can do your own analysis. Uh, you don't have to agree with this uh, way I presented, but what you can agree, I hope, is the correlation, the negative correlation between stocks and prices. Higher the stocks, lower the prices. <clears throat> okay? And lower the stocks, higher the prices. Okay? So that's a very uh, stable uh, relationship, negative relationship in the CPO uh, market. So again, I want to show you the same data, but this is showing you over the longer time period. So last year, we had a record high prices in April. In April of last year, I think it was on 29th of April, prices hit 7,000 ringgit per ton, very high prices. At that time, the stocks were just at 1.5 million tons. So low stocks, prices up. But these were prices also shot up because Indonesia banned the export of palm oil. Because Indonesia banned the export of palm oil, global buyers shifted to buying from Malaysia, offering Malaysian uh, producers a windfall uh, with prices rising higher, exports booming, and stocks depressed. So the question is, will we see 7,000 ringgit again? Remember, stocks are expected to be about 1.5 million tons. That's what we think tomorrow. Uh, it, may be, it may be slightly higher. Uh, so it's not a big difference between 1.472 million and 1.52 million tons. But we do not think CPO prices will reach 7,000 ringgit. And there are reasons for that. Uh, number one is, as I described previously, palm oil is no longer the cheapest oil. So either palm prices have to fall lower or bean oil prices have to rise higher in order for palm oil to capture a discount of 70 to 100 US dollars and above. Okay. So next slide is showing you the difference in the long term. Uh, between Indonesia and Malaysia red line, showing you the stock level movement in Indonesia. And then the horizontal dotted red line is the average Indonesian stock levels. You can see stock levels shot up in March of last year in Indonesia when the government imposed a ban on the exports. So stock levels shot up. And since then, Indonesia have been aggressively exporting, helping to reduce the stock levels. And that means Malaysia has been losing some market share in India and in Indonesia. So Indonesian stocks rose to record high. Malaysian stocks have somewhat been about flat. Uh, but the main, main level in, in Malaysia is 2 million tons. So are we above 2 million tons or below 2 million tons? If you are below, the market is very, very tight. The market is very, very tight. And that's what we expect to see uh, tomorrow. Okay. And I think that's one reason why uh, prices recovered uh, very rapidly today ahead of the data. And also because Malaysia is expecting a good export month in May after a dismal performance in April. Okay, so production. So when we look at the uh, Malaysian uh, CPO market, we must understand or must have an idea on where Malaysian production is going to be. So Malaysian production this year is expected to be at about 18.5 to 18.6 million tons. So not a dramatic, nothing very impressive performance here because Malaysia has a few problems with supply. Uh, number one, we'll Area planted area is down. There is constant problem with workers. Mature trees are large in number and yields are declining over the long term period. So if you look at this chart, what is very clear is that production has been sideways since 2021. 
2023. Production has not really recovered and done what was the highest seen in 2017, right? About 19 point, uh, 19.8 million tons. We never really broke out of the 20 million tons. So production this year is expected to be about flat only, no dramatic uh, improvement. And what does that mean? That means there is going to be persistent supply problem. There's going to be a persistent supply problem as edible oil importing countries uh, increase their consumption. Uh, there is not going to be sufficient oil, palm oil available out in the market. Uh, sunflower oil is plenty and available in Russia, but as you would know, uh, the Russian government is hesitant in renewing the uh, the Black Sea Green Initiative. Uh, I think they will renew, uh, but any hesitancy, any termination of those contracts means buyers in the Middle East, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Iran, will increasingly rely on uh, sourcing palm oil to, in order to replenish their stocks. Okay? So that's the situation in Malaysia. Not great scene for production. Over in Indonesia, we can expect a slightly better scenario. Uh, we predict Indonesian production to rise to 50 million tons. That is an increase of 2% or 1 million tons increase. In Indonesia, planted area is rising year by year, right? Unlike uh, Malaysia, planted area is shrinking. And I'll show you a chart, chart on that. Weather is expected to be favorable, although talk and probability of El Nino occurring is raised, especially this month, and we can see early glimpses of a re not record high, but unusually high temperatures in Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam. Will that hit Indonesia and Malaysia? Of course it will. Will it happen? How severe will it be? We will look at these uh, charts. Okay, so Indonesian production is better. Malaysian production is not so impressive. As I said, if you look at the charts, again, the data and all are freely available on MPOB website. You can take a look at it uh, at your own leisure time. Uh, but the main story here is that planted oil palm planted area is on a declining trend in uh, Malaysia. I was just looking at the data earlier. So planted area in Malaysia in 2022 was 5.67 million hectares. 5.67 million hectares. But in 2021, it was 5.7 million hectares. So down by about 63,000 hectares. Why is the planted area declining? One reason is because increasingly more and more oil palm planted areas are converted into townships in Malaysia. And this is not unusual in any developing urbanizing country. You need more and more land in order to build houses, hospitals, all the taman taman to build more roads. And uh, oil palm uh, companies are also diversifying in order to go into construction sector. But also remember, this is an issue because once you lose these areas, it's gone forever. You're not going to get new areas. So in the long term, production may not, in Malaysia, may not see 20 million tons. But in Malay Indonesia, the oil palm planted area have been on the rising trajectory. Okay, a little bit on uh, uh, El Nino. Uh, this is... Uh, main price swing this year, not just for farm, board, but for any agricultural crop. And El Nino is here. I think it's here, although the Australian Bureau of Meteorology, the link is here. I've given you the link so you can go and look at it. They offer climate updates every month. So you can also have a look at it yourself and you can analyze it by yourself. 
and they offer all the different models, what are the readings, what are the probability. So according to Australian Bureau of Meteorology, latest update today, the probability of Alino occurring is still 50%. So the chances are just 50%, not high, not low. But we live in Southeast Asia, so we know the temperature, we feel it, we can understand, okay, is this hotter than usual, okay? And you can also know from the preparation by the Malaysian government, hey, be prepared for water shortage, be prepared because the reservoir water is going to be low. And all this gives us some indication. The Indonesian government has also announced, hey, be prepared for the driest year uh, in case there is a forest fire. So all these signals gives us an indication that, yes, El Nino might just happen. So what is the problem if El Nino occurs? Number one, the problem is you will have less, lower than usual rains. Condition will be very, very dry. This does not have an impact on palm production in the short term, but it will have a severe impact on yields in the third, fourth quarter of this year and in the first quarter of 2020. Four. So this is, there will be a lagged impact in the end of this year and at the beginning of next year. So that's when the impact will be felt. However, impact on prices will be felt immediately. Impact on prices will be felt immediately. If we hear more, an increase in the probability of El Nino, or if there is a confirmation, yes, we are now in the midst of El Nino, then you can expect prices to be rising sharply to 4,000, 4,200, 4,500 ringgit per time because of the impact on production towards end of this year, sapping yields, lowering stocks, supporting higher prices. And this chart shows you in May, we are here just into the El Nino threshold. And so far, all forecast shows, you can see all the gray lines, that is the ensemble, all the lines put together. And then the green line is the best fit, showing clearly that we are going to be at plus 2.4 degrees above average. And that means we are stepping into a strong El Nino conditions. And you will feel it when it comes. Okay, what about supply and uh, production and exports uh, in Malaysia? Okay, so production is running slightly lower than exports. So if you look at January to April, based on the, based on the estimate numbers for April, production is down by 2%. So if you take January to April 2023, compared to January to April 2022, production is down by 2%. But exports are up by 7%. So exports are running faster than production. And domestic use is down by about 5% during the same period. So what does all this tell us? It tells us that if the pace is the same, then we will be in a situation where you will have a declining stock trend. And that means stocks can even go to 1.4, 1.3 million tons, which is possibility. Again, raising the prospect of higher prices. So you can guess I'm, I'm a little bit bullish here when it comes to prices based on uh, where we are. So looking a little bit more on the export side. So we looked at the supply. We looked at the weather. Now I want to just focus a little bit on the demand side in the next uh, few minutes, then we can uh, stop to take some questions. So when it comes, Malaysian palm oil exports goes to almost every country on the planet, okay? Uh, Malaysian palm oil board used to publish export by destinations, but they stopped doing that now. If you want it, you need to pay to get the data. But I've used cargo surveyor data, so we get all this data every five days, so we have a good track of what is happening on the export side. We even get the estimates 
well before it is published. So if you want to receive that, that's not a problem. You can WhatsApp me. I'll give you the number later at the last slide. So if you want to look at exports, India and the subcontinent, which covers Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Pakistan, the EU and China. These are the three main markets to analyze when it comes to export and demand. So India and China, they, they, they switch. Some years, China is the number one buyer from Malaysia. Some years, India is the number one buyer. But these are the main three segments if you want to analyze and look at if to understand export demand. So what does this chart tell us? It tells us that if there is any policy changes in India, it will have a major impact on Malaysian exports. So for example, if India decides, hey, we want to increase the import tariff, then you can expect an immediate knee-jerk reaction with CPO prices falling rapidly because the prospect of exports is lower now. Okay? If uh, the EU announces and says, we are going to ban the import of all palm products, then again, you will see an impact. But say that the EU makes up about 20% of Malaysian exports, but the EU only makes up about 10% of global palm oil export. So that's another reason why whenever EU, the EU announces, there is not really a significant impact on prices in the short and in the medium term. So the EU is actually a small time buyer in the global context. Okay? India is much larger buyer uh, compared to uh, the EU. Okay, exports still looking at demand side. So this year, the main export market to watch for Malaysia is China. Okay, so Malaysia and Indonesia collectively exported about 7 million tons of palm products to China before COVID. So the big question here is, can China buy 7 million tons again? Since the COVID pandemic, uh, the imports of palm oil by China has been below 7 million tons. So that means China buying of palm is below potential, is below potential. And if China returns to buying big, will in Malaysia benefit? So far, the data shows Malaysia has not benefited. If you look at this chart, the red bar showing Indonesia export to China month, year on year basis. So we compare, uh, if you look at the last bar here, we compare March exports, March 2023 exports compared to March 2022 export. So Indonesia export has been higher since October of last year. But Malaysia has been quite flat. Malaysian exports have been quite flat. And one reason is because of prices. Indonesian OLED prices are generally about $15 to $10 lower than Malaysia's. Okay? And why OLED? Because China mainly, mainly buys palm OLED. They don't buy CPO. They mainly buy OLED and some steering and CPKO, but mainly OLED. <clears throat> so China, another reason why China slowed down in buying is because of stocks. Stock levels in China, based on some uh, data, uh, shows that stocks are at a very elevated level. So China has a problem in consuming the stocks that they currently have. Demand has not really returned to China in China uh, since the reopening uh, from COVID-induced uh, lockdown. So there is still a lot of oil that is needs to be used in China in order for strong demand to come back. And if that happens, uh, I think Indonesia will benefit strongly, uh, but Malaysia's impact would be a bit, a bit smaller just because of the volume that is available. Okay, over in India, so in China, 
stocks are a bit data is a bit difficult to get, <clears throat> but Indian data is widely available. Um, and you can get this data. So in India, edible oil stocks has been in surplus. So in India, edible oil stocks are very, very high at the moment, right? Very, very high at the moment. The stocks have been rising and been at surplus on year on year basis uh, for the last two years, for the last two years. That means India has been buying and buying and buying but domestic consumption has been slowing. Domestic consumption has been slowing. Why India has so secured so much of edible oils, are mainly made up of palm oil. One reason is because of the palm oil in discount to bean oil was wide at about $240, $400 at the end of last year. So because the spread was so wide, India took advantage and stocked up. Uh, very well. But this also tells us that India may not be a good buyer in April, in May, and in June uh, until the stocks are uh, depleted. So these are the markets I just want to show you so that you understand the fundamentals on will China buy, will India buy. So that depends on the stock levels in the countries. Uh, so I've spoken about these, so I don't want to repeat this part. This is just basically showing you uh, global palm production uh, based on the USDA data. So the USDA, I just want to highlight these two. So you can look at MPOB data, recent palm oil data, and also uh, United States Department of Agriculture data, which is published around the 10th of every month. It is called USDA, WASDE, World Agriculture Supply Demand Estimates. So USDA will publish the data for all oils, and they will give some commentary on the changes of the production, exports, and imports. So in that uh, report, you can find a, what are the areas to look out for when it comes to other oils. For palm oil, you can look at palm oil analytics. For other oils, you can look at uh, USDA. Okay, conclusion. Uh, weather and supply are the two main uh, swing factors in pricing in this year. So the weather is the El Nino, and supply is to do with the production and also export supply from Indonesia. Remember, Indonesia was holding back exports in order to meet domestic demand during the Ramadan period. Now the Ramadan is over, Indonesian government is encouraging more and more exports to go out of the market. Second point, uh, palm oil prices are forecast to face upward pressure so as you guessed, I am bullish that prices will can will and can rise higher still in the second quarter, mainly because of this El Nino induced support. El Nino is not officially here, but we don't have to wait until they tell us. We can feel it. The prices are kind of like, hmm, I think it's hot. Prices are also looking a little hot here, and many crops will be affected in Malaysia and in neighboring countries not just palm. In the event of strong El Nino, production will be impacted from 18.5. It might even be lower than 18.45 million that we saw last year. Okay? But the impact will really be felt towards end of this year and the beginning of next year. Okay? High prices will not be sustained. So this, this, I think, will not be the case. So we will not see a sustained rise in prices because, as I say, if you have high prices, you will lose markets. That just happens, right? There will be demand destruction. So palm prices has to remain competitive. So that means palm has to remain the most and the best, the cheapest oil compared to other oils in order to maintain the market share. If palm prices are high, bean oil prices are low, people will not buy, number one. The other thing is you will start 
having the problem of food price inflation. Malaysian end month stock is the main determinant. I hope you agree with me on that one. Uh, export demand to China will have we have to watch this space here. Although China stocks are high, China is increasingly buying from Indonesia. Uh, what are the prospects of Malaysian exports to China? This is still unknown. If China buys big from Malaysia, we, we can see prices sustained and supported at about 4,200 4, and even 4,500, but not for very long. The last point, Indonesia policy changes. Uh, number one, on the supply side, as I said, the export part, and number two, on the exchange. So some of you may be aware that the Indonesian government is trying to create a CPO exchange platform, just like Bursa Malaysia, in order to discover prices, but most importantly, in order to regulate the flow of exports from the country. So these policy changes, uh, whether increasing exports or limiting exports, uh, will set up price pressure uh, in the second half of this year. So with that, I conclude my presentation. Here are all the references of the data that I've used. So there is no secret here. You can also go and look for the data and play around with it. And if you have any questions, anything you want to ask, you can message me on WhatsApp or WeChat or on my Twitter. And I'll be very happy to engage with you on the market and let you know uh, of any future educational programs organized by Excel Learn where you can benefit. With that, thank you very much, and I will stop sharing now. Right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Satya, for your um, informative sharing. I believe uh, many of our audiences, uh, audiences here have gained valuable information about uh, the palm oil market outlook in the short and uh, medium term. So it's now time for our Q&A session, and we encourage you to participate by asking any questions that you may have that is related to uh, today's session. Uh, to do so, you can simply type in your question in the Q&A box. And when you submit your question, please, please make sure it is sent to all co-hosts to ensure that I can easily locate and address your question. Uh, we will uh, look Looking forward to hearing from you soon, uh, so don't hesitate to ask any questions related to today's topic. Uh, while waiting for your questions uh, to come, uh, if you don't have any questions, I would like to ask a small favor from you. Um, I, would like to, I would like you to take a minute of your time to fill up this uh, feedback form uh, since we have already provided you an informative session today. Uh, it just only takes you less than one minute to fill up this feedback form. So you can find the link for the feedback form will be provided in the Q&A uh, in the chat box, or you can uh, take your smartphone to scan this QR code. Uh, just take one quick minute and let us know what are your thoughts, comments, as well as uh, feedbacks, so that in the near future, uh, we are able to improve on our site and give you a great value, uh, contents and learnings to help you improve your trading. So just uh, take one quick minute uh, to fill up the feedback form.
Okay, time's up. If you have already submitted your feedback, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, While well, for those of you who haven't uh, finished yet, you can continue to finish it. And thanks for your participation in giving us your feedback. Uh, we will strive our best in improving in the next session. Now let's continue with the Q&A session. And uh, to ensure uh, we have enough time for all our participants, uh, we will be selecting and answering the most uh, relevant questions from the Q&A box. And please do uh, take note that uh, due to time constraints and uh, limitations, uh, we may not be able to answer all of the questions. So uh, give me some time to uh, uh, get your question here. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Satya, uh, there are several questions uh, that is related to uh, the mm -hmm. Indonesia's uh, CPO benchmark pricing. So. Uh, Yes. So the question is uh, whether how actu how will actually the uh, new benchmark pricing from uh, Indonesia uh, affect our CPO price movement? Mm, okay. So that's a very good question. Yes. So that's a very uh, uh, something that is very imminent. So so far the information I have is that uh, there are two exchanges that are vying or trying to get the. CPO futures contract listed on the exchange. One is JFX, Jakarta Futures Exchange, and the ICDX, Indonesia Commodities Derivative Exchange. So whichever exchange that gets the approval from the government to list the CPO contract, how will this impact? I think the immediate impact will be lower CPO export flow from Indonesia. Indonesia exports about 2 million tons uh a month so we will see an immediate reduction or slowdown and that means malaysian cpo exporters will benefit fcpo prices will be supported higher in the long term how will this impact uh we do not know the details yet which is expected to come out end of may and the aim is to launch it in june according to the indonesian ministry uh the, the impact in the long term, according to my guess, is that there will not be a large switch in volumes. So you don't have, that, that will not happen. I think Malaysian CPO, FCPO volume will remain steady. Liquidity will still be there. There will still be volatility. It will still be a relevant price discovering uh, platform. Uh, we, you, we don't have to worry that uh, suddenly Indonesia will become the price discovery mechanism. I don't think that will happen because to discover prices, you need a few things. You need data, you need transparency, you need timeliness, you need accuracy, you need the fundamentals working in addition to the liquidity, volatility, and so on. Uh, so I don't think there'll be immediate switch in the volume from Malaysia to Indonesia. Short term, Malaysia will benefit. In the long term, it's still unclear for now. Okay. Uh, the next question that is uh, related to uh, interest, how does interest rate actually uh, affect uh, CPO pricing? I think it's actually uh, one of the uh, hot happenings in uh, recent uh, months because uh, in, in increase in interest rate in the United States as well as in mm. Southeast Asia. So how does this uh, increase uh, uh, in the uh, changes in interest rate can affect uh, CPO pricing. Mm. So, I mean, there is no there is, uh, interest rates movement impacts on several commodity asset class, asset classes like commodities, currencies, uh, equities, uh, bonds, and so on. So there is no direct isolated uh, relationship between interest rate and CPO. However, interest rates movements, especially now that we are in a specter landscape of higher interest rates, higher interest rates can limit the uh, consumption of food items. It can limit uh, the usage of edible oils. The interest rates are going up because prices of goods and services are rising at a much faster pace than the central banks can accommodate or willing to accept. Uh, therefore, higher interest rates, the idea of higher interest rates is to limit 
uh, to slow down um, consumption, domestic consumption. So I think that's what will happen. And when we when we refer to domestic consumption, the main sector that will be impacted is the food sector. And in the food sector is the edible oil market segment. So higher interest rates mean the consumption will be impacted indirectly. I mean, that's the whole idea of increasing interest rates in order to slow down people's spending. You can't stop, but you can slow down people's spending. Uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's a negative thing uh, in terms of the domestic uh, consumption market. But on the financial side, uh, what you will see is that higher interest rates uh, in the United States uh, can drive U.S. dollar to become stronger. Right? Stronger U.S. dollar means a weaker ringgit. A weaker ringgit is good for exports. A weaker ringgit is good for export. So if you're somebody who look at FCPO on a daily basis, any day you see the ringgit drops drastically, that means it's CPO, which is priced in ringgit, is cheaper for international buyers. When it's cheaper, there is a stoke for higher exports. So there will be a temporary uh, push in prices. I'll stop there. Okay. Uh, there is another question that is, uh, I think, related to uh, a retail trader, uh, which I think is a quite a commonly, uh, frequently asked question, is that mm -hmm. uh, when there is a release of uh, fundamental uh, data, so uh, generally it may impact the prices of FCPO, right? So uh, the yeah. question here would be uh, when there is a release of data, uh, the price may not be conform or coherent with the data. Mm, uh, whether yes. there is a delay uh, because of the delay in news or information that is uh, that reached to uh, retail traders. Okay, good question. Yes. So when we say fundamental data, there are at least two main types. One is estimate. The other is actual. Okay. So market moves does not move based on actual actual is it's about we are late in the game right uh, before the actual data comes out there are already estimates coming out how do we get the estimate you speak to the plantation you speak to some traders you speak to other analysts you get a sense hey i think may production is going to be better i think may exports is going to rise you get a sense so once you get a sense then there are polling uh, companies like Bloomberg, Reuters, they put out polling numbers. So these are just estimates. So the market will run or trade based on these estimates sometimes, right? Sometimes it will trade even before the estimates comes out, okay? So estimates. Once the estimate comes out, the market is already priced in, the market is comfortable. Okay, this is what we expect. Stocks down, exports down, production unchanged. And then there is part two, which is the actual data. When the actual data comes out, then you will see, hey, is there a surprise? Did the actual data behave according to the estimates and so on? So sometimes some people are puzzled. Exports are down in the estimates. And then the, when the actual data comes out, exports are down, but not so significantly down. But prices are still going lower and lower. That's because the market has already priced in the estimate and the actual data. It's over already. Okay? So that's a fundamental way of explaining. But as I say, uh, prices are made up of sentiments, technical analysis, speculation, and so on. But the, in the long term, in the long term, prices will converge to fundamental. So you must be able to be, must be able to have faith in the fundamentals that, oh, yes, you know, yes, production is going to slow down, prices are going to rise. You must have that faith and you must be able to hold on to it. And, you know, the other thing is that you can always get the data from the, on the website is always delayed, right? I mean, I, I also send out the data when the data comes out. So if you want, you, you can contact me and I'm happy to send the data as and when they come out. 
Right, uh, next question is that uh, what is the correlation between a crude oil and a crude palm oil? Oh, okay, so crude oil is the ubiquitous commodity. It's used in all kind of uh, production processes. <laughs> uh, there is strong correlation between crude oil and CPO. There is strong correlation between crude oil and steel. There is very strong correlation between crude and iron ore. So crude oil is the king of commodity pricing driver. Uh, why do we need to, do we look at this? Yes, you can look at CPO and crude because about 8% of uh, CPO in the global market is used in biodiesel production. So biodiesel is a blend between regular diesel and palm metal ester, which is derived from uh, CPO. So you can look at the correlation between palm and crude oil when trying to understand the biodiesel market. If CPO prices are higher than crude palm oil, then the biodiesel blending is not very uh, effective. Okay? It's not very profitable. But if palm prices are lower, and crude oil prices are higher, then biodiesel blending is attractive, it's profitable. So why do I uh, refer to this? Because in the Indonesian market, uh, biodiesel is a big domestic uh, consumption market. Okay? So we look at what we call pogo. Pogo means palm oil, gas oil. Gas oil is just another name for diesel. Okay? So you can look at this spread between palm oil CPU and gas oil and try to understand hey, is the spread positive or negative. If it's a positive means, okay, we can do biodiesel blending. Uh, if it's negative, what is it? Negative means it's very, very good. If negative means it's very positive. Neg negative pogo spread means that palm is cheaper than uh, crude oil. And therefore, more people should be using palm in the cars, palm in the vehicles. Okay? So that's one reason why we compare these two pricing. But otherwise, it's a very general comparison. It's a very general comparison, which has got crude as high correlation with any commodities. All right. Uh, next question would be, I think, is related to uh, export from uh, Indonesia. So the question is that uh, when can you uh, when do you foresee whether there would be an expectation of a big export from uh, Indonesia? Well, big export. Okay, it's a very generic question. Um, Indonesian exports been uh, declining over the last three months, right? So two reasons for that. One is the government has been very deliberate in limiting export out of the country in order to ensure sufficient domestic supply to meet the Ramadan seasonal demand. That's one thing. The second reason is very high levy and taxes on palm products. Indonesia has a weekly, once in two weeks, levy and uh, tax changes. And these levy and tax changes are so high, it's about $220 now for CPO. And that means buyers have to pay these taxes. Okay, So that means exports are not looking very great. Although Indonesia does export, I'm not saying there's no export, it's just that exports on month-on-month -month basis will be declining. When can we expect? I think now there is availability, but the prices are not there attractive for buyers to come out and buy uh, big and this is made worse by high stocks in india and in china adding to that uh, negative outlook is the narrow spread of palm to green oil when will they come out to export big i would say now we are in may july august is is is, is my bet
All right. Um, there is, I think, another uh, final question that we're going to take is that uh, besides uh, analyst report that is uh, produced by uh, those futures broker, uh, are there any other sources that we can actually uh, get, uh, for example, an analyst report or fundamentals report that is uh, related to uh, uh, CTO or maybe other commodity products? Mm, okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so futures brokers, they put out this morning report, morning call. Uh, often these reports are mainly based on technical analysis with some notes on the fundamentals. At Palm Oil Analytics, we only do fundamentals. We don't do technical. Uh, so if you want to get a good grasp of pricing, you must have solid knowledge on fundamentals, um, but also understand the technicals of the, mar of the market. Uh, so on the fundamental side, that's what we do. I mean, you can, you know, drop me a message or WhatsApp or we can we can I can send you the newsletter or you can look at Powerball Analytics website and you can get a sense of the kind of uh, report content that we put out on a day-to-day basis. -day. So we put out two newsletters a day because market is so volatile. So we do that. You can also look at Bursa in uh, Palmol Analytics report is also available on Bursa Malaysia, but it's only once a week. Uh, you can also look at that to get a sense that how fundamentals have an impact on the market. Uh, I would also suggest that you look at NPOB data. If you have time, you can download the data and mess around with some analysis uh, so that you kind of like get an idea. Yes, stock data has an impact on prices in this way. Uh, exports behavior, um, how does that relate to production and so on, yeah. It, Okay, I think it's uh, quite about time. And thank you for yeah. all of you uh, audiences, uh, participants and engagement. And we appreciate each and every one of uh, you. And allow me to wrap up uh, today's uh, webinar session. Now, as I've uh, shared with you uh, previously, uh, this is the LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. Uh, it's a series of topics where we will be conducting every Tuesday evening same time from 8 30 pm until 10 pm there are lots of uh, content packed and informative topics where you can learn uh, some practical knowledge about uh, not futures trading from our experienced speakers so if you like to join uh, any session uh, you can scan this qr code and register the topics that you would like to attend once you scan the qr code uh, you will come to this uh, calendar page where there will be an event calendar. So if you would like to join the upcoming sessions, you can find the LLF webinar topics on Tuesday column. You can click on it and then uh, register yourself. Similarly, uh, if you want to understand the futures market and how to trade futures in details, then this online workshop is definitely right for you because today's webinar is only a, a brief uh, to introduce you about the futures market. So if you're still very new in futures market or if you are thinking of a trading futures, I highly recommend you to join this online workshop right now as uh, this online workshop is very different from our webinar series because the online workshop is a step-by-step -step workshop where we will be guiding you how to kickstart to trade your first futures contract. Uh, it's a detailed class from uh, A to Z for beginners. So you can actually pick up your phone, uh, take this picture or screenshot uh, this page and uh, register yourself uh, right after this uh, webinar ends. Uh, it's only for those who are serious in trading, uh, even starting your futures trading because every session, we will be limited to the first 50 online attendees only. So uh, remember to register yourself in both uh, workshops and book yourself a seat. You can also find the LRF uh, online workshop in our event calendar as well. Uh, the online workshop is on Saturday. The time is uh, 9.30 to 12.30 or 2 to 5 p.m. Now, there's a website from Busa Malaysia called uh, Busa Marketplace. Inside, you can register yourself for a risk-free uh, trading experience 
where you can do paper trading in a trading platform. It's called the Derivatives Trading Simulator, DTS. Uh, you can do your paper trading and you can also familiarize yourself in uh, futures uh, trading and understand how futures trading actually work. So uh, why not uh, give yourself a try, test it out so you can actually learn and begin to develop interest to further your, uh, your futures trading. Before we end this session, uh, let me introduce you to this uh, Busa Academy, where this uh, Busa Academy is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform, where you can get all the information and knowledge about stocks, futures, and any other products that you can trade in Busa Malaysia. You can scan the QR code on your right here, or you can also uh, Google search Busa Academy make sure you are able to find uh, this uh, link and you can access to Busa Academy for more uh, information. All right, uh, this comes to the end of our session today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Satya, for sharing with us an informative uh, session. And I thank you all, uh, all, all of you, for joining us today. Uh, we hope you found this webinar informative and engaging. And I believe that uh, you have learned uh, lots of uh, informative knowledge, especially from the fundamental perspective and uh, broaden uh, your perspective about the palm oil uh, market price outlook in the short and medium term. So uh, with that, uh, once again, thank, thank you, Dr. Satya. And with that, uh, I'm CY, I'll see you uh, next time. Good night and goodbye.